in this video, I want to talk about just a few more details, a few more details about um, about the hyperbolic equation in the michaelis menten model. The hyperbolic equation and the michaelis menten model. Forgive me for my poor handwriting. I just don't want to take too long in this video. I just want to say just a few more things. So in the last video we talked about the hyperbolic graph, right, which looked a little something like this. We had reaction velocity on the left, and we had, or on the y-axis rather, and we had substrate concentration on the x-axis, and we said it looked something like this. Right, where the reaction velocity sort of leveled off after a certain point as far as substrate concentration goes. Increasing it beyond a certain point doesn't further increase the velocity. And that's because at a certain point we reach Vmax, right? That maximum velocity up here is Vmax. Okay, and we said at the at Vmax over two, we had what was called the Km, right? So that substrate concentration there was the Km. Okay, the Km was the substrate concentration at Vmax over two, right? And we talked about specifically what the Km was, and then we mentioned the hyperbolic equation, right? Which was, uh, which was this the hyperbolic equation, which we said that if you had a particular, if you wanted to find the velocity of of a um, of you know an enzymatic reaction, enzymatic catalyzed reaction, then you would use this equation, this hyperbolic equation, right? Where if you had, if you knew the Vmax and the Km, all you had to do was plug in the substrate concentration, and you'd find the velocity at that particular substrate concentration. Now uh, I want to go into a few a few more details, and those details are as follows, as far as you know, at what you expect mathematically at these different substrate concentrations. So, if what what should you expect? What should you expect when the substrate concentration is equal to the Km? Well, what we can do is we just plug this in mathematically and say, well, well, we know that we should have a V equal to V max over two. So let's actually show this mathematically. So if the substrate concentration is equal to the Km, what we can do is we can uh, replace Km here with substrate concentration. So we plug in V max, right, times the substrate concentration over Km plus the substrate concentration. But instead of putting Km, right, we're going to put in uh, substrate concentration because the Km is equal to the substrate concentration. So then what we get is we get V max times the substrate concentration over 2 times the substrate concentration. And then the substrate concentrations cancel, and we just have V max over 2. So the velocity. The velocity that we should expect when the substrate concentration is equal to the Km is Vmax over 2. Okay, so that's the mathematical sort of reasoning behind it. Let me go further and uh, elaborate on a few more things. What happens if we have the substrate concentration being much, much greater than the Km, right? So that would be the case where we have a substrate concentration that's, that's you know far beyond the Km, much, much greater. Then if we can we can kind of imagine that, right? We can kind of imagine that as the Km being effectively equal to zero. Okay, it's pretty close to zero, at, at least relative to the substrate concentration, because it's such it's gonna be such a small number relative to the substrate concentration. Well then what happens? Okay, well we'd have the velocity, right, equal to um the Vmax times the substrate concentration over if we say that the Km is essentially zero, then we wouldn't include. It. We just say zero plus the substrate concentration, right? So um, we can, you know, we could put that here: zero plus the substrate concentration, which is just Vmax times the substrate concentration over the substrate concentration. Those values cancel, and then we get Vmax, right? So what we're saying here essentially is that at very, very high substrate concentrations, we should be at Vmax, which is exactly the case. If we have a substrate concentration that's right here. For instance, right, and it's much, much greater than the Km, then we would expect to be at, Km, at at the Vmax. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there. Again, this is the mathematical reasoning. Okay, what if the substrate concentration is much, much smaller than the Km? 
right? So in this case, we can imagine the, the substrate concentration is close to zero or effectively zero, okay? So what we do here is we say that the velocity will be equal to the Vmax times, now I'm still going to include the substrate concentration here because I, can, I don't want to multiply Vmax times zero, but it's, it's, the substrate concentration is a very small number. It's effectively zero, but down here, what we're going to have is we're going to have the Vmax over the Km plus zero, right, which is just Vmax over uh, Km times the substrate concentration. So what does this mean here? Right, what is this what's going on here? That essentially what we can conclude is that the velocity is proportional to the substrate concentration not to five <laughs> to the substrate concentration. Okay. So we should have a linear relationship. Th there'll be a direct relationship between the substrate concentration and V because V max and KM are both constant numbers, right? So they're not going to be changing. The only thing that can change here is the substrate concentration. So if we increase the substrate concentration, then we would expect the velocity to increase, you know, in a, in a directly proportional way. So that's what's implied here, and that makes sense too, right? If we have a much, if we have a very small concentration of substrate here, much less than the Km, we would expect there to be a linear relationship, a direct relationship. So I hope those few details um, helped you understand the material a little bit better. In case you were interested, um, but that's about it. Thanks for watching.